going on guys hope you enjoyed that guitar intro i was just having some fun jamming over the river dragon has come which is one of my favorite nevermore songs anyways today we're going to take a look at nevermore's history and have a discussion about what happened to this band thank you all for watching as always don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get right into this so starting in the early years this band was formed in the 90s by vocalist world dane and bassist Jim Shepard, after leaving a previous band named Sanctuary. The two went on to find a drummer by the name of Van Williams and a little-known guitarist by the name of Jeff Loomis. Together, the four of them started what would eventually become the band Nevermore. They quickly began releasing albums, starting with a self-titled work in 1995 and moved, moving to the Politics of Ecstasy in 1996. These albums uh, received a lot of attention initially and allowed the bands to get on tours very early. These early works were praised for their heavy guitar work with just insane solos by Jeff Loomis and the very unique vocal style by World Dane, who has somewhat of an opera style of singing, which was not really seen in metal at the time, and this garnered them uh, a, a real fan base early on. The band then went on to release the album Dreaming Neon Black in 1999, which is more of a concept album of a man going insane after losing a woman he loved, each song kind of telling his journey into madness. As you can see, this band wasn't afraid to push the envelope early on, and they were very, very uh, into these dark topics and dark lyrical ideas with heavy, heavy music which at the time was heavily praised and kind of went against the grunge trend that was really taking over the 90s. And so this band had a very real kind of cold following in the beginning. After these early years, Nevermore went on to really refine their sound and tighten up the production and released what I think to be their best work yet. These came out in the early 2000s with Dead Heart in a Dead World followed up by Enemies of Reality, and finally This Godless Endeavor in 2005. All three of these albums are absolute masterpieces in my opinion, with just incredible riffs, huge heavy soundscapes, and unbelievable guitar solos from Jeff Loomis. This is where they really went on to define their style and sound of being this fast, heavy, ridiculously complex uh, band when it came to their soundscapes and their guitar solos and these just nutty technical riffs. These albums are just amazing. Even today, they, they were so ahead of this, their time and I can't recommend them enough. This is also where the band really began to take off. They were touring all over the world and becoming one of the most recognized names in heavy metal music. However, the later years weren't as kind to this band. It took them five years to finally release a new album in 2010. This album was titled The Obsidian Conspiracy, which was yet another really well done album, which received a lot of praise from fans. However, shortly after this album was released, there was a lot of trouble with the band as Van Williams and Jeff Loomis both left due to personal uh, reasons and musical differences, which weren't really highlighted too much. All subsequent tours were then cancelled, and the band really just kind of faded out really quickly. Talk began about a year later in 2011 of maybe having a reunion one day, and these talks continued for many years, but they just never happened. And World Dane, the vocalist, stated that he just would not make a new album without Jeff Loomis in the band, because, I mean, let's be real, he's, he's pretty irreplaceable when it comes to his riffing and solo style. And then, in 2017, World Dane passed away tragically from a heart attack, thus putting the band to rest for good and removing any thoughts of a reunion ever happening. It was an incredibly sad moment in the metal community, and he will be missed by so many. Worrell and Jeff built an amazing band over the years, one that will go down as, in history as, as one of the most influential bands to ever exist in the metal scene, in my opinion. And hearing of his passing was just devastating for me personally, as I grew up listening to this band when I was very young, and I really fell in love with the incredible guitar work from Jeff Loomis. I even started playing Schechter guitars because of him, and all the 
music videos with him playing those crazy guitars and I even went on to buy the Jeff Loomis signature model. Without him, I don't even know if I'd be making metal music, metal videos, or even playing guitar in the first place. So to say this band was influential to me is quite the understatement. You know, they they really serve as kind of the foundation for my metal tastes and my metal style when it comes to writing music and playing guitar. So yeah, I, I'm quite the Nevermore fanboy and I miss them every single day. But what do you guys think? Have you heard of this band before? Do you listen to them a lot and miss them a ton like me? Or are you just now figuring them out and figuring out what they're all about? Please let me know in the comments. Thank you all for watching. Again, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Later.